Good morning. Thanks for joining us for devotions today. Uh, our reading to this, our reading for today is from First Kings uh, chapter seventeen, verses seventeen to twenty-four. Now we had from I believe it was Thursday uh, that there's a famine in the land of Israel because of wicked King Ahab, and the rest of Israel is also apostate. They're not following God anymore. They're chasing after idols. And so uh, the prophet Elijah predicts a drought. The drought, of course, happens. Elijah's first fed bread and meat uh, by ravens that God sends by the brook uh, Cherith. Then he goes to say, stay with the widow of Zarephath. And, you know, she's about to run out of uh, oil and flour. And he says, but first, before you make a meal for your son and yourself, uh, make me a little cake so that I can eat it. Uh, and I promise you that it's not going to run out. And, of course, the Lord uh, provides for them as well. But then after that, this is the very next thing that happens, verse 17 and following. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to bring, me, bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself out upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. And the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you're a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Now it's interesting how this goes. You can imagine what Elijah must be feeling right now. Uh, this widow who's been taking care of him, taking him into her home, that has expressed this trust in God, trust in God uh, by giving him the flour and the oil into a cake that, that he needed um, before she made it for her son. And now her son's dead. And Elijah does, I think, what most of us would do. Lord, why did you let this happen? Uh, what could possibly be going through your head that this woman who's taking such good care of me and now it feels like she's being punished? We know the Lord is in control. Nothing happens outside of his control. So why did God let the son die? And Elijah pleased to, pleads to the Lord on behalf of the son, stretches himself out three times over the son, says, oh, Lord, please let the son's life come back into him. And, of course, the Lord does, miraculously, again, providing, because that's how, um, especially in this day, that's how um, parents would be provided for, would be through their children. And the son grows up to take care of his mother, uh, especially in the absence of the father. The son is just that much more important. So another miraculous providing uh, provision by God uh, for this widow and her son. That's not the only thing that we see here. It's interesting, if you look, um, oh, I don't know, a ways further into the New Testament, uh, Luke, it's Luke chapter 7, verse 14, and uh, Jesus raises a widow's son. But in that case, he doesn't pray to God that the son be raised. Elijah prays, and he says, Oh Lord, I don't understand why you let this happen. Please give life to the son again. Jesus, when he's in the same situation, he's at a widow's house uh, healing her son, and he touches the funeral, uh, the funeral beer, and he says, young man, I say to you, arise. And that's that much more powerful of a moment. Elijah's the most powerful prophet, kind of. Um, he's, he's the one, you know, uh, brings down fire on people. Uh, there's, the whole, uh, there's the whole thing at Carmel, you know, with the sacrifice competition between Yahweh and Baal. Uh, Elijah's the big dog as far as the prophets are concerned. And even he has to pray to God, please let life come back into this into this boy. And then Jesus comes and he says, young man, I say to you, arise. And that's the way that Jesus works. This is when they say um, that uh, Jesus teaches as one who has authority, not like the teachers of the law. If the teachers of the law th at that time were just like, uh, say, me and Pastor Neubauer, whoever it might be, we don't get to say things of our own, um, you know, on our own authority. Uh, we say, if we forgive sins, we say, in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins. Or if we're, if we're saying something, we quote, we quote scripture, we quote the words of Jesus, we quote the words of the Old Testament, whatever it might be, but we don't just say, this is what I say, and so therefore it must be authoritative. Jesus, on the other hand, says, young man, I say to you, arise. And that's what you and I can look forward to hearing at the end of our days as well. 
because we will die. That's inevitable unless Jesus should return first. But on the day of resurrection, Jesus will, in the same way that he said to that young man, Arise, say to all the dead in Christ, I say to you, Arise. And at Jesus' command, we will rise up from our graves, united once again, body and soul, to life everlasting and to eternal joy and peace in the presence of our God. And that's something to look forward to, all at the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your powerful word that uh, does what it says, that provides what it speaks. We thank you that uh, we have those powerful words to look forward to. Uh, I say to you, arise, that you'll one day say to us. We ask that you would hold us always in that hope, dear Lord, and help us to share it with everyone we meet. We ask it all in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. You all have a good day.